Hey guys, welcome to another anatomy video. Today we'll be talking about scapulohumeral rhythm. So, you can see I copied this paragraph on it directly out of my anatomy textbook. And when you first read it, it doesn't make any sense. I read this and I was like, what did I just read? Because it's not worded very well and it just really, it doesn't make a lot of sense the first time you read it. So we're going to work through it together and hopefully this helps you understand it better. So scapulohumeral rhythm is the synergistic movement of the shoulder joint and the shoulder girdle to produce 180 degrees of arm abduction. So that basically just means um, it's the movement between your humerus and your scapula and the rest of the shoulder girdle as you abduct, abduct. So moving your arm away from your body to produce 100 degree, 180 degrees of arm abduction. And so we'll look at all the details of how your body actually works to produce that motion. And we'll make a little diagram here too that um, hopefully helps you visualize what's going on. Um, it definitely helped me because on my anatomy exam there was an essay question that literally was just, it just said in a paragraph or two explain scapulohumeral rhythm and you basically just had to reproduce this paragraph. Um, not word for word, but you had to get all the key points there and you would get minus like two points for each thing that was not that was missing. So I kind of made this diagram to, that would kind of help spark my memory for what actually happened where and all this stuff. So hopefully it helps you too. So I'll kind of make something like this. It's very crude, but the point is that it helps you remember. So this is your humerus right here, head of your humerus. And then this is your scapula, and this is your clavicle. So let's take this line by line. The ratio for the 180 degrees, so this is looking at um, a left shoulder posteriorly. The ratio for 180 degrees, that means that you can do 180 degrees of movement. That's arm abduction. So 120 degrees of that is shoulder abduction. The last 60 degrees of that is more shoulder girdle movement. This produces an overall 2 to 1 ratio. So 120 degrees, 60 degrees, it's just a 2 to 1 ratio. Pretty simple. Not too bad so far. Okay. Next line. The first 70 degrees of movement takes place at the shoulder. So, first 70 degrees as you go from here to here takes place at the shoulder. During the first 30 degrees of abduction, the scapula is stabilized on the thorax. So 30 degrees, it 
it's stabilized. This is called the setting phase. Scapular movement is varied during this phase, but most often involves slight upward rotation. So during this setting phase, as you abduct the first 30 degrees, the scapula it can vary from person to person, obviously, but it generally involves just a slight upward rotation. So I'm not really going to draw anything to show that because it's not a huge thing. But this first 30 degrees, it starts to slightly upward rotate, and then that next line after about 70 degrees. So once you get to that 70 degree mark, then the scapular movement becomes more noticeable. And if you look at the back of someone, um, and as they abduct their arm, you can actually see how much the scapula moves. It's kind of cool. Okay. The axis of rotation for approximately the first 30 of the 60 degrees of scapular rotation. So the scapula here is going to rotate about 60 degrees in total. And so the first 30 degrees of upward rotation is located on the spine of the scapula. So this would kind of be the spine. That's the top of it. Located at the vertebral border. So this is the axis of rotation right here. And it's going to upwardly rotate 60 degrees in total, but the first 30 degrees is at the spine of the scapula. Um, okay. During this upward rotation of the scapula, um, the clavicle, this was the clavicle here, is also going to elevate about 12 to 15 degrees. So, During the first 30 degrees of the 60 degrees of the upward rotation of the scapula, the clavicle also elevates 12 to 15 degrees. Let me just write in what these are just for reference. Okay. As the arm continues to abduct and the scapula continues to upwardly rotate and the axis so the axis of rotation moves along the spine to the AC joint. So it started like along the spine of the scapula here at the vertebral border, so more on this edge. And as it upwardly rotates, the axis of rotation changes to the AC joint, so the acromio, acromioclavicular joint right here, or the acromion of the scapula and the clavicle articulate. So the next 30 degrees, remember this is 60 degrees in total, the next 30 degrees the axis of rotation is here, and clavicular elevation will continue, so it will actually end up being in total around 30 to 36 degrees of elevation. So during this phase, while the clavicle is elevating, it will also rotate posteriorly.
along its longitudinal axis to facilitate the scapular upward rotation. So if it didn't rotate posteriorly a little bit, it would actually kind of get in the way of the scapula as it upwardly rotates. So that's pretty cool. Lastly, the shoulder joint also externally rotates. So the greater tubercle here does not impinge on the acromion process. So this shoulder joint here is going to kind of externally rotate. because if it didn't, the greater tubercle here would impinge on the acromion process and get in the way. So, all of those steps together have to work in order for you to produce 180 degrees of arm abduction, and it's pretty cool that your body just does this naturally. So, one last thing. Um, the shoulder joint is a ball and socket joint and those allow you to do tons of movements. So you can move your arm in every direction and the thing is because it's a ball and socket joint um, it actually creates an inverse relationship between stability and mobility. So the shoulder joint is very mobile because it can produce so many movements. But as you increase that mobility, stability decreases. That's why it's easier to get uh, a variety of shoulder injuries. And so it's really cool that your body is able to just do this on its own to allow you to get 180 degrees of arm abduction, but when you get an injury, um, usually you have reduced range of motion. And so you have to rehab it to get that back. And um, scapulohumeral rhythm is kind of how it all works. So I hope this helped clear up um, what it means. Hopefully this diagram kind of helps show, um, visually illustrate these. When you, this, uh, this paragraph, when you read something like this, it's kind of heavy and doesn't make a lot of sense. At least that's how it works for me. So it helps me to kind of make sense of it with a picture. And I hope this helped.